tide is turning, it's close at hand. As we sail onwards to the promised land, a one-way ticket to our destiny. It's all aboard the good ship Victory. Home and dry, you and I. As long as we're together, then our dreams will never die. Home and dry, you and I. As long as you believe we're home and dry. Home and dry with five games to go. The title clinched against Queen's Park Rangers at Goodison Park on a blue letter day, May the 6th. It's one a corner kick on the right hand side. Sheedy will take it in towards the near post. Not headed away convincingly by Gregory. Back in by Gray. Van and Howe, Mountfield 1 0. Derek Mountfield breaks the deadlock. Derek Mountfield scoring the first view. goal. Not a bad day, Derek, one way or another. Oh, tremendous. Great feeling. And as you can probably hear by the fan, the players in the back there, it's a great feeling. The walk around afterwards was, was fantastic. And I really feel proud and hope the fans have a great day tonight. It's, it's, it's not just for the players, it's for everyone, including the fans. Crossed in again with a left foot. Graham Sharp with a headed chance. 2 0. Graham Sharp's 30th of the season. Ignites the fuse. The party has started. Everton now are the champions. You can be sure of that. Graham Sharp, his 21st league goal of the season. Getting very close now to the 23 that Joe Royal scored in the last championship season here in 1970. And after a rather quiet second half, 50,000 Evertonians are on their feet and are preparing now for the celebration. Peter Reid, just out of the bath. What's it like in there at the moment? It's great, Clive. Uh, yeah, come in. Sing song and everything. I know the lads would have drowned you knowing that you're a red, but, you know. No, I'm absolutely delighted. Can't put into words. I think it's it's for them more than anyone. I mean, you've had a few few lean years, and uh, I think that makes up for a bit of it. Now we've just got to get it under our belts, and we've got a couple of more important games to go in. Uh, look forward to. I hope it's just starting for them, and uh, we won't get blase about this. The champions, we deserve it, but it's not the end. Collected on the edge of the penalty area, desperate for another goal to round off the afternoon. But these Evertonians have had so many afternoons to remember and treasure in recent months. Everton have a throw in just inside their own half on the left hand side. The referee milking the situation has his whistle in his mouth. That's it. Champions. Everton complete the first leg of the treble and go on to Rotterdam and to Wembley as the champions of England. A marvellous moment for all. Howard, congratulations. How does the championship feel the second time around? Well, it feels very sweet tonight. Um, this is a hard slog. We start off in August and we want to, want to prove to be the best, like everyone else. And we've achieved that today. Um, with five games left, I think it's a tremendous achievement on behalf of the players. 18 months ago. The players are down at the Gladys Street end now. Applauding the supporters. Peter Reid. A one-arm salute, which says it all. Scarves and hats being thrown out from the Gladys Street for their favourites to wear on this great moment. And just listen to the singing. Well, the greatest team the world has ever seen, I don't know yet. But certainly this season... They must be chief contenders for Europe's number one side. You heard the chance for Howard Kendall, but still the manager just stands at the foot of the players' tunnel and watches proudly as his young side accept the accolades and applause. Is it more satisfying as a manager than it was as a player? Well, it's a long time ago. I mean, uh, in terms of when I was a player, um, I think it's... It's a very, very nice feeling tonight. I noticed you stayed off the pitch at the end whilst the players took their lap of honour. Was that a conscious decision on your part? It's a players' night, isn't it? I mean, it's a players' achievement. They're, they're the ones that have gone out there and they've, they've done it week after week. Um, we've only sent them out there. How long ago did you sense that this was possible? I felt towards the end of last season we were turning into a, a very, very good side. I mean, it's taken four years for this to happen. I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. 
you know, we've built something here and um, it's proved today to be the best. It's all about the good ship. and dry with a new first division record of 90 points the biggest title winning margin of all time 13 points having beaten every team in the first division 16 players qualified for championship medals and we can meet them now as you've never met them introduce nicknames secrets and all by the footballers of the year neville southall and peter reed hoddle takes it short to perryman hoddle again turns, clips it in with the left foot, it's a lovely cross, header for Falco, and an astonishing save by Neville Southall. That is the best save I have seen this season. The Football Writers Player of the Year, Neville Southall. 42 league appearances, the team's only ever present. Well, Neville, the best goalkeeper in the world, and we call him Hitler because he is the great dictator, and he's got a striking resemblance to the man. <laughs> John Bailey, 15 league appearances to qualify for a medal in the last week of the season. Character to the side. He's a bit unfortunate to lose his place to Pat early on. I think he gets more excited even if he's not playing than all the lads put together. Back in there by McMahon. This time White's the buffer. Oh, a lovely drive by Stevens. Oh, and what a way to return for Gary Stevens. A magnificent shot, fully 25 yards. Gary Stevens, 37 games in the title season and three goals plus a first England cap. Well, we call him Squeak, and um, if you, well, you've interviewed Gary, and you know what that little Orville voice is like. But he's he's got a squeaky little voice there. But uh, his game's not squeaky. He's strong, forceful, and a great defender. Pat Vanden Howe, 31 league matches after his move from Birmingham City in September. <laughs> well, there's no need to say anything else. I think the fans have got him uh, earmarked. Um, it's gone on to the lad psychopath because he is, um, let's say, aggressive in his style of play, and. Um, a boy who surprised me, he's come in and he's done ever so well to keep John Bailey out the side. He must be a hell of a player, as well as a, a bit ruthless. Gary Stevens will take the throw. In towards Adrian Heath, trying to turn away from Griffin. Finds Irving, edge of the penalty area, rolled in low. Peter Reid, 2-0. Oh, yes. Peter Reid has had an outstanding game. Sends Everton on towards the quarterfinals. Peter Reid, the player's own award winner. Two league goals from his 36 appearances. Peter Reid has been probably the best player in Britain, without doubt midfield this season and last season I think why he's not playing for England regular I don't know um, great competitor he's like as a person anyway I think I think he gets the best out of his life like he possibly can a tremendous player Kevin Ratcliffe captain of club and country 40 games en route to lifting the championship trophy well, well what can you say about that as a uh, speedy Gonzalez uh, Clough said he's the fastest um, Back four player in the country and I had second there. Um, Ratters, he is the Mickey taker of the, the uh, squad. He takes the mick out of everyone. The only thing with him, he can't take it back. He can't take it when we give it him back. He gets a bit red. Into Stephen, edge of the penalty area, trying to get outside. Sure, he's done so, and Derek Manfield has capitalised and got Everton's third goal. His second of the night, Derek Manfield's 14th of the season, which is a quite extraordinary total for a centre half. Derek Manfield played 37 matches in the title race, scoring a remarkable 10 league goals. Oh, the Chris Savare look alike. Um, yeah, Chris Savare, I mean, there's two peas in a the pod there. And, uh, a lad who's come in and he's done ever so well. And he, the lads reckon he's going to get the golden, uh, what is it, the Adidas Golden Boots Awards <laughs> for the goals he gets. Brilliant season for the lad. There are four minutes left to play. One surely would win it now. 
Reid will take it. Right footed in towards Derek Manfield. Heath, he scored! Adrian Heath has scored for Everton. And that surely takes them back to Wembley. Adrian Heath played 17 First Division games before his injury in December, scoring 11 goals. Adrian Heath did brilliant for us until he got his unfortunate injury. Looks like he'll be at the start of the season and be fit. He's got plenty of nicknames. Inchi's one of them, but I, I like calling him the Jap. He reminds me of a Jap, really, but I think he would have been another England regular, really. He's done brilliant for us and probably won us a championship. Bracewell, oh, that's an epic ball into the path of Trevor Stephen. He's got past Pickering inside the penalty area. Oh, what a goal! What a marvellous goal by Trevor Stephen! Trevor Stephen, 40 league appearances in a non-stop season, which saw him pull on an England shirt, 12 First Division goals. Oh, so Trev, since the England call-up, uh, he's pretty proper Trev, um, nice lad, everything, and we call him Sir, but uh, when he's on the pitch, he, he is the most elegant of footballers, and he's had a terrific season, and I think that England spot is for the for a long time to come. Gary Stevens there with the throw in for Everton. Over on the right hand side, in towards Gray at the near post, run all the way through. Hey, Kevin Richardson has scored. Oh, what a dream return for Everton's Milk Cup semi final hero, Kevin Richardson. Kevin Richardson scored four invaluable league goals in 14 games plus two substitute appearances. Kev is probably one of the most underrated players I've ever seen in my life. He's done absolutely brilliant. Call him Bones because he's not the fastest of players, is he? <laughs> You know, but I mean, his attitude has been brilliant. I mean, I, as I say, I don't know how he's, how he's kept himself going a lot of the times because he's done and come in, done brilliantly, scored some vital goals for us, gone out and come back and done the same. He's been brilliant. Richardson again, left hand side. Bardsley chasing him back. Early cross from Richardson, deflected by Sinnott. Might come for Gary Stevens, left footed shot. Graham Sharp with a great chance. It's there. Graham Sharp has scored for Everton. Oh, what a marvellous tonic just before half time. Gary Stevens made it all possible, forcing the ball forward. And Graham Sharp, whose season has suddenly turned into goals, scores the most important one of his life. Graham Sharp, top scorer with 21 league goals from 36 starts and that one afternoon in the number 12 shirt. Oh, Sharpie, too. I think that's a nickname he got before he come here, but... Um... We, we can't say, the lads think he's got a f bit of a fat backside, that's all I'll say about that, and um, that's what we call him, but uh, he's had a great season, 30 odd goals and, well, what a player. Bracewell, back out to Stephen, left hand side, crossed in with a right foot, this time towards Gray, oh, marvellous goal, and this is Andy Gray at his very, very best, another wonderful diving header. Andy Gray, just 21 full appearances, plus 10 on the bench, producing nine First Division goals. Big Andy, well, now that is Freddie Starr. Anyone, anyone, and his personality is like Freddie Starr's as well, because you can never shut him up. And when he gets a drink down him, well, he's a lunatic, but what, what a fan. <laughs> I mean, he, when he gets a drink down him, I think he plays like that when he's out there. He goes for everything, and brave as a lion and a great striker. Terry Curran picked up a medal despite starting only four games. He was sub on 14 occasions before leaving the club in May. TC, I mean, then again, I think a lot of people thought he didn't do an actual lot for us, but I can assure you he did, really. I mean, he came and played up front a lot of the times, out of position, did well. I mean, I don't think we lost a game with Terry playing. Possibly he'll be looking for management sort of this season or next, and... I hope he does have so well. Now the hopeful ball down the right-hand side. Heath might make something of it, though. He does. He turns it back to Trevor Stephen. Driven forward. Bracewell popping up on the edge of the penalty area. Right-footed shot. Super goal. Paul Bracewell's first for Everton. And really well taken. And tribute to a marvellous performance from Howard Kendall's summer signing tonight. Paul Bracewell, 37 games and two goals. His contribution in his first league campaign at Goodison. Ah, Brace. Well, he hasn't got a nickname, but suffice to say that his card is on uh, automatic pilot to... Uh, Sunderland because he's got a girlfriend up there and we rib him about that more than anything but uh, it's been a joy playing with him in there and I'm delighted for him with the England call up and that lad will go on to be a great player Here's Sharp, on towards Heath great chance for Alan Harper inside the penalty area 1-1, Alan Harper the substitute has equalised, six minutes left to play and a dream goal for the former Liverpool player Alan Harper, 10 matches plus 8 as sub in just about every position. I call him the cat because he always used to take me for the warm-ups. <laughs> he thinks he's a bit of a keeper, like him. a great character. I think he's possibly one of the unsung heroes along with Kevin, really, who's won us the championship. He's another one who's come in, sort of, he's played about, I think, 99 different positions this season. He's done ever so well in all of them. 
to mend this play. I think he'd be regular with somebody else. Bray climbing over Shaw a little bit, but play going on with Adrian Heath, trying to free Sheedy down the left-hand side. Musker couldn't control it. Sheedy inside the penalty area. Oh, what a brilliant goal by Kevin Sheedy. 3-0 and a magnificent strike by the left foot of Kevin Sheedy. And Kevin Sheedy, 29 games, producing an outstanding tally of 11 league goals. Well, he's the other uh, twin with the fat backside there. Uh... Uh, Pinky, uh, Pinky and Perky, him and Sharpie, and uh, them two have got the uh, weight problems of the team. Um, but while left peg, um, possibly the best in the country, and uh, I didn't get it. I didn't. Well, we didn't see a lot of Penenkas, but I wouldn't, we wouldn't be far off the best in the world. And he's had a great season, scoring goals from midfield, and um, it's a great, great lad to have. It. He'll always get you a goal. Cover. So now the moment that Goodison Park has been waiting for for 15 years, as the trophy which heralds Everton as the number one team in England. It's given to their skipper, Kevin Ratcliffe, and paraded over his head for the Everton fans who've waited so long... Played 42, won 28, drawn six, lost eight, four, 88 against 43. Point 90, Everton's first championship for 15 years. One down, two to go. Everton in the shape of Andy Gray and Paul Bracewell to get us underway defending the tunnel end of Wembley Stadium in this first half. Neville Southall's goal behind which most... It was at Wembley, the stadium in which it had all begun a year earlier, that Everton's treble bid eventually faltered in the last ten minutes of their 60th match of the season. There are a thousand reasons why. You need luck to win a cup, and that day it deserted the Blues. A high one in towards Graham Sharp. Bailey has come from it. Not a terribly good punch. Reed on the volley. Oh, and the poster came out with Kidman beaten on the line. And Peter Reid so close to opening Everton's account. When chances are few and far between, you really can't afford to miss them. With a stooping header gets it away. Stevens has a lovely ball down. Reid into the dead ball line on the right hand side. He's got past Arthur Robertson. Reid back to Kevin Sheedy. Gray with a shot just wide. Great chance for Everton. Maybe their best of the game. Peter Reid set it up on the right hand side. Sheedy let it run. And Andy Gray, who makes such a habit of scoring... In then fate can take a hand and provide a talking point and a turning point. And then Peter Reid wins it. Oh, and he's brought down very cynically there by Kevin Moore, and he was preparing to go on. And what action will Peter Willis take here? No doubt about it, it was a cynical foul by Moore. And Peter Reid was going clear from that loose pass. He's certainly going to book him. He sent him off. He sent him off. Kevin Moran is sent off by the referee Peter Willis and for the first time in an FA Cup final at Wembley a player is sent off and Manchester United will contest the decision for as long as they like but Kevin Moran is going to have to go. Ten angry men can still be a match for 11 desperately tired men that all it takes is a moment of inspiration to end a dream. Clears his lines again for United. Hughes, 15 yards inside his own half, turning away from Bracewell skillfully. On towards Norman Whiteside, onside again, and clear of Van and Howe down the right-hand side. Strachan and Olsen in support of the Irishman. Whiteside, edge of the penalty area, tries a left-footed shot, it's there! Norman Whiteside has scored for Manchester United, and that will be the goal which wins the FA Cup. Norman Whiteside, a minute after wasting a splendid opportunity, perhaps Manchester United's best of the game, Scores a marvellous goal with his left foot. Curled it past Neville Southall from a difficult angle. And Norman Whiteside, who was the youngest ever scorer of a Wembley FA Cup final goal two years ago, has scored a dramatic extra time goal for Manchester United. And he could be the winner. I think, first of all, you can't take anything away from Manchester United. And, um, you know, on the day, they fully deserved a victory. I, I would have liked to have played them with a couple of days more rest than with Bones. I think UEFA and I think the FA will have to get together and make sure that that type of situation doesn't arise again. It's not good for the team involved. It was a shocking experience for us. I think it's not the fact that you have to play two games, but it's the mental pressures of building yourself up for one big European tie. Because remember, we were creating history by being the first Everton side to be in a European final. So that carried a lot of mental pressure. But uh, we just look forward now to, to, to getting a bite of the cherry and we feel that we fresh legs and Charity Shield Day that we will, uh, we will prove once again we are the best team in the country. The misery of that humid May afternoon can be avenged one day and who knows, possibly even forgotten. 
but the sheer unbounded joy that Everton's stylish and classy performance in Rotterdam the previous Wednesday evening brought to 25,000 of their supporters in the Feyenoord Stadium and many, many more listening at home will never be forgotten. Good night, Vienna. footing with the players we've got and obviously the staff we've got working for us at the moment I can't see any reason that if we keep putting the effort in and working as hard as we have done this season that we won't sort of in the next five six years or however long be a major force in our game and I'm sure that come May of the next three or four years that Everton will still be involved in either the championship or cup finals or obviously we'll have to wait and see now as regards European football. Think there'll be enough for another album next year? I hope so yeah. <laughs>